people i get asked a ton of questions every week about decoupage and it doesn't matter if it's a napkin if it's tissue paper if it's cardstock all the things but the most commonly asked question is should you paint the glass so in this tutorial we're going to be going over just that including the prepping mediums sealers and paint choices first up let's talk about our glass these are just from dollar tree and a lot of people in the crafting community they love going to dollar tree because guess what you're spending a whole dollar 25 on a cute little piece like this and you can DIY it on up. Now this piece was vintage and I got this at a thrift store and spent $5.99 on it. I'm a huge fan of crackle glass. So this had to come home with me. I just washed it because it was a little crusty musty. Okay, it was sitting on my uh, <laughs> sitting on my shelf. But I wanted y'all to see like, it really doesn't matter what type of glass. If you want to decoupage something like this or even just like the tip just to add a little bit of extra, even though you paid more for it, glass is glass, people, for the most part. Glass is glass. Once you've picked your piece, then it's time to clean it. As you notice, I have some gloves on, okay? Whenever you're handling glass, and if not gloves, you can use little finger, you know, finger condoms. I don't really have a better... <laughs> You have a better term for that. They have these little finger things that just, you know, they get any. Listen, okay, this done went somewhere else. But basically, you want to make sure that your fingers are not, you know, putting residue on the glass. Okay, it's important to make sure that we're cleaning these. You can clean these a couple different ways. I've had people ask, what do I recommend? There's nothing wrong with taking some of your favorite, let me reach for it, some of your favorite, you know, dish soap. This is one of my favorites. And then I have this sitting around that I use in a pinch for stuff. You can just, you know, spray it on up, take you some hot water, and then just go over it. I don't recommend using um, chemical cleaners because they can also leave residue. Oh, slippery little sucker. <laughs> you see my glove just... Rah! All right, sorry. Um, I feel like those things leave residue on the glasses. So I try not to use like regular spray cleaners on them. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not washing it in the sink, which is what I recommend you doing, because my sink has dishes in it, okay? My sink has dishes. All right, I just gave it a nice rinse with some hot water, okay? So then you just dry up your piece of glass and you're wearing your gloves, obviously, and you're gonna wanna wear your gloves the entire time you're decoupaging it, period, anyhow, or you're working with it. Even if you're just DIYing your glass for a reason, if you're painting it and stuff, you don't want to have residue stuck on your glass. If you don't wanna use dish soap and hot water, grab yourself some alcohol, I always have this joint laying around, and just, we're whistling. <laughs> Whistle while you work. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you want to just sprinkle some in, you know, you can use a cotton swab if you want. You know, don't let me tell you where to sprinkle your alcohol. That that came out wrong too. Your paint is going to stick better to a glass surface if, if it's free of oils, residue, dust, you know, crusty bits, all the things. If you choose to paint on a dirty surface, you're gonna run the risk that after time, that application is probably gonna peel off in the areas that there were residue or a little bit of debris had been left. And people don't judge me, I am being lazy and absolutely not taking a sticker off the bottom of these glass pieces for this tutorial. Before you get to painting or putting your medium on, make sure you dry these you can use uh, i'm just using paper towel here you can use um you know rag if you got a microfiber cloth you know use a microfiber cloth i know i have some around here somewhere but they are probably over in the side of my craft room in a corner somewhere and i will find them after christmas it's time for my little repetitive spiel people if you're new to tutorial tuesday i like to let everyone know coming in that these are meant to be lengthy very detailed 
in their slow pace. So this type of content is not for everyone, but I have a lot of people that ask me the who, what, when, why, how, and to break things down. And in these tutorials, I do just that. These are my go-to mediums whenever I'm doing glass or craft decoupage pieces. If I'm doing something like a fabric, I'll grab this piece. I've even used tacky glue before for some fabric. And if you're planning to create something that you're gonna be washing, grabbing something that you know is dishwasher safe is a great idea. If I'm doing a furniture piece or something that I know is going to have a high traffic area where you're going to be putting a lot of things down on it, I will use my Dixie Belle sealer or some Minwax Polycrylic. But be mindful when you're using Minwax Polycrylic because you're going to need to wear PPE. So I really try to stay away from this one because decoupage art can take some time and I don't really like having this thing on my face for long. And yes, you can use all of these to attach your pieces and to seal over them. When it comes to the paints I like to use, I have two favorites. I like this one and I like this one and here's why. To demonstrate why the type of paints you use is important whenever you're decoupaging on glass, we're gonna do a little demonstration here with some folk art matte paint with the multi-surface I just shared and the Waverly chalk paint I just shared. We're gonna start with the acrylic paint and I wanna share, I get a lot of comments, oh, you can paint the glass with acrylic. Yes, yes, you can. But keep this in mind, people. Premium all-purpose acrylic paint for decorative crafts and home decor, superior coverage, and look at this. Use on all porous surfaces. Does that look porous to you? Does it? Because I'm about to show you why the multi-surface and chalk is a better option for paint and glass. And I'm using different brushes as well. So this way, you know, I'm not like mixing formulas or anything. We're just going to go up and down. And also, I want you to keep in mind that when you're painting on glass, I usually like to sponge first. But for purpose of this little demonstration, before we get into the other part, I'm just doing it with the paintbrush. Okay. Now, this multi-surface joint right here, it is very specific to even say that you can use on glass, ceramics, wood, metal, all the good things, okay? This, believe it or not, it really shocked me. Now I'm just gonna let this dry for a couple minutes and we're gonna check these out. These have been drying about 10 minutes. They're not fully cured. For a decent cure time, I would allow any of the projects you're gonna be decoupaging with glass to dry at least one to three hours. If you're absolutely an acrylic paint lover and feel like you have to use acrylic paint or that's what you have accessible to you, Make sure to give yourself plenty of time, weeks even people, weeks even. I would let this cure a bare minimum of two weeks before you try to really decoupage over it to allow this paint to set. Because as it says on the back, this is not really intended for surfaces that are not porous. So chances are, whenever you go, and I'm gonna get this up to the camera because I really want you to see it. Actually, let me adjust the camera downward. All right, I think I've gotten this as good as I can get. Now, I like to show this. So you see my thumb? If I'm pressing, you can see that it changes colors, right? So this way, I'm not going to be giving you a, oh, look at that. You know, like you can see that my thumb's not changing colors. Obviously, I'm trying to pull the wool over your eye. You know what I mean? Like I'm not applying any pressure. This is me applying pressure to my thumb. You can see it changes colors. So this way with each one of these, you're gonna see that I'm applying the same amount of pressure and you're gonna see which paints stick better to your glass surface. There you go. Just one little swoop. And that just peels up that quick. And I can do it gently where I'm hardly applying any pressure and it doesn't really come off. See how my thumb is not really changing colors? Now let's do this one thumb right color is it is it coming off it is not and you see how much my thumbs the color of my thumb has changed so I'm really applying pressure onto this 
as I'm doing it. I am not being easy about it, okay? Now, here's the chalk paint. Again, thumb changing colors, pulling it up, and it's not coming up, okay? So these two, within 10 minutes, have already cured enough with one coat that they're sticking into the glass well enough. So can you use acrylic paint? Absolutely. So those that attacked me in one of my videos were like, you can use acrylic paint. Yep, you sure can. You can use acrylic paint. You can absolutely do that. However, it's not made for non-porous surface and it will take some time to cure. So if you got a couple weeks of spare time before your next decoupage project, this, this is all you, my friend. However, if you're impatient like me and you wanna get your job done, you wanna use you know, a nice multi-surface paint or a nice chalk paint. And honestly, brand doesn't matter. I have Dixie Bell paints, which are extremely expensive. I even have folk art white chalk paint that is just a couple bucks and that works really well also but these two right now are my current favorites if you want you can spray a layer of clear rust-oleum matte paint on these before you start painting or decoupaging it's going to just give a nice sticky coverage so your paint kind of goes on here without any issues or your medium is going to go on here without any issues that's just another option I don't do that very often, but I wanna try and give you guys as much information as I possibly can. Now let's bring in the napkin. This is the one I have chosen for today. I recently received this in an amazing box full of napkins from Dina Bowman. I cannot express, I, I hope I'm saying that right. I cannot express how thrilled I was and shocked to receive so many. Listen, y'all want to make me cry, send me a giant box of napkins because it just is so, I love napkins so much. It was just emotional for me. Um, but I thought this would be a great napkin for this DIY, mostly because it has some really nice, vibrant colors in the pattern. So on the one that we're going to be painting and not painting, this is going to shine through. Now, I also want to share with you what it's going to look like painted and not painted using tissue paper. And the reason I want to use tissue paper or gift wrap paper, as some people may call it, is because it's super thin and extremely similar to napkins. And I get questions about that as well. And for our tissue paper, I'm going to be using these little prints right here. This is a prototype for my TDS decoupage paper brand. I am not 100% if I'm going to be putting this out, but this is, this is, I do smaller collages in my decoupage kits, but this is, this is a prototype of something I'm working on, but I just happen to have extras laying around here and it's tissue paper. So we're going to be using one of these pieces. I haven't decided which one just yet. For the sake of the video and my comfort, I'm just going to use this paint. I am really comfortable using it. So I'm going to paint one of each of these with this. And to start out, I'm going to just take a sponge. If you have a little pouncer, you can use that. I'm going to just take this, cut a little section off of it, and I'm just going to tapity tap 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 our chalk paint all over the surface of our glass piece if you want to use a paintbrush go right ahead it's just been my experience that if i use a sponge and i just tap 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 all over everything i can then take the paintbrush and go over the second coat smoothing kind of everything out and i'm done sometimes if i use a paintbrush and i go over this first coat then it's a second coat, then it's a third coat. Because usually whenever I'm doing glass, I have to keep switching the direction that I'm painting with the paintbrush versus the second coat after a sponging. It really doesn't matter what way you paint it over the glass surface. It's just covering up any spaces or gaps and filling everything in. For me, I personally just feel like it's less time consuming. Keep that in mind. But you, you paint however you want to, people. Don't let me stop you from using a paintbrush with every little layer and swipe you want to swipe with. 
as you can see here, people, we got some texture going on, correct? And I've had people comment, Brandy, it's not smooth. It's this, it's that. You know, when you sponge, it leaves bumps. Yes, it does. It leaves bumps. And if you do a second coat, you're still going to have a little bit of texture on here. Once you put your decoupage paper over, it's not a big deal. You can hardly see it. However, if you're a stickler for wanting something super smooth, like I said, today I'm going to be doing one coat like this and then one coat with the paintbrush. If you want to do two coats with the sponge, which is what we're going to do on this one, and this is the one we're going to use for our gift or tissue paper, <laughs> you can sand this down gently and it's going to smooth it out. So this one we're going to sponge and paintbrush, and that's going to be our napkin piece. And this one we're going to sponge and sponge. So you have two layers of sponge and sand it down. So you can see it really doesn't matter either way you want to paint to accomplish getting to the point where you put your medium and your paper on. Because this is another question that I get asked all the time. So I'm going to show you today what the differences are. And then you just pick one to apply your paint. Use whatever brush you want. Honestly, this is just, you know, I'm pretty sure it's like a little synthetic brush. No big deal. And then just go over your glass piece, filling in any gaps or sections, obviously. You know, paint, paint it on up. Now this piece is dried up and I'm going to sponge it a second time, which both of these are my favorite ways to paint before decoupaging. I don't really have a preference one over the other in case that's a question you're going to ask in the comments. Do I favor one? I honestly think it just for me depends on what I'm going for. If I'm going for a more vintage look, then having more of the texture behind the napkin or behind tissue paper, it's just going to allow that, especially if you plan on adding a little bit of distressing over top of the tissue paper or your napkin or whatever you're putting on top of your glass. Now it's time for the gloves to come off. We can get down to business. I'm just kidding. We still need gloves. <laughs> I had to take those off because they had paint on them and we're not trying to get paint on our pieces that we're not you know putting paint on them these are going to be clear you know translucent so we want them to have a nice clean base today i'm just going to be using some of this matte mod podge you can grab this a dollar tree and you can get the bigger ones like this right here at walmart for i don't know six seven eight bucks they're, they're not really expensive, but I'm going to use this one right here because I just happen to have it sitting here. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to use. Let's do the napkin first because that's going to be the most tedious, to be honest with you. If you are new to decoupage and you are not familiar with napkins or anything like that, first thing I can share with you is we got to get rid of these sneaky layers underneath. We just want to use the top decorative layer. There's a couple ways you can get this off of here, especially if you want to use the whole napkin. You can take a little bit of Mod Podge, put it on two fingers, swirl it together, and just go like this, and the edge will pop off. You could take a piece of ta painter's tape and put one on this side, one on this side, right on the edge, and peel apart, and it'll reveal the sneaky layers. You might have to do that a second time or a third time, depending on how many layers are underneath of that. I'm not worrying about doing that at all. One of my favorite ways and quickest ways that'll probably give me crap this time because I got gloves on is just the tear a corner. And usually at this point, I can see the sneaky layers. Yep, I got gloves on, so I can't grab it. Um, there we go. There we go. And there's two two sneaky layers on this one. Okay, so we got two. I'm trying to share them with you so you can see it. So here's one. There's two. Okay, and you want to make sure you have this off. If not, and you don't happen to have all the sneaky layers and you realize it midway through, that's it's tough go. Um, one of the ways you can fix that is try to rip the sucker back off. If you only got one napkin, then you're kind of screwed. One of the things that you want to do to try and adjust it because, so what happens and why you want these layers off is this is the thing that's going to attach onto your glass. So that's the thing that grabbed the Mod Podge. Guess what didn't? Your top layer. So what's the top layer doing? It's hanging out. It is not 
really adhered to your glass surface. What it is, is it's just laying idly here and you'll probably notice that it's like this almost when you touch it. So in order to adjust that, you'll have to come in with a heavy layer of Mod Podge over the top to make sure it presses down to attach through the second layer but you're going to have to wait for that first layer to dry once you've attached it. It's a whole thing. If you guys are interested in me actually doing a decoupage oops tutorial video on how to fix things, let me know down below. And um, I'll happily mess up some projects for us to go over. Oh, I'm forgetting my fan brush. I like to use a fan brush whenever I'm using decoupage with a napkin or decoupage with tissue paper. They're super thin, and as you're going over it, this allows you to get in, and I'm going to share it with you, around the sides super gently and squeeze extra Mod Podge to get a nice seal in the creases. I don't know how really else to describe it other than those. And the thicker brushes, I got a thicker paintbrush. Oh, where's my thing? I just used this to paint. This isn't. Yeah, I kind of can share. It's got some paint on it, but see how this is kind of thick? That's a, like, it's like a centimeter. You see that? There ain't no centimeter. There. It's super thin. It just allows to really get in little sections of your napkin where you're, you know, applying it together. To attach the napkin, you can use your finger. You can use a little sponge. I like using these little dry sponges that don't cut a section off of it here I'll just this is what they usually look like but pretend that's half the sponge okay I have another pack I just don't want to ruin anymore because I'm cheap and um so you can use a little sponge like this it's a dry sponge and some cling wrap okay these are going to help you smooth it out be mindful I I like to kind of press mine down with the sponge it will grab any Mod Podge that seeps up through the napkin. So this way you don't have like pooling of the Mod Podge on top the napkin, which can create bubbles later. And then once I've grabbed the excess Mod Podge that seeps up, I will take the cling wrap and go over it very gently, smoothing it out even more. And you can do that if you're really good with the sponge. You can smooth use the sponge to smooth that out too. Just be careful because I've had several people say they've tried my technique and it, um, you know, it rips. Operator error, people. Huh? Operator error. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So anyhow, we're going to just start the glass piece off. I like to start in sections. And I always like to say less is more whenever I'm decoupaging pretty much any napkin or tissue paper. And it really depends on the surface, too, because sometimes there's certain circumstances where you're like, oh, I got to... I got to put as much on here as quickly as possible because of the way that something's shaped and you're not sure if you're going to be able to adjust it. And if you don't like these little bumps, go ahead and iron them out, people. Iron them out. Okay. And yes, you can just take an iron to that and iron them bumps on out. But usually it's been my experience that they kind of fade as you're, you know, decoupaging and going. Now here's what I'm talking about with the fan brush, okay? As you're going around the edges and see how there's an attachment section, it's already attached, okay? If you have a thick brush, guess what this is going to do? It's gonna wet this and the top of that napkin and most likely when you go to go like this, it's this section is gonna be pressed into the part that you already Mod Podged. So the fan brushes squeeze right underneath these pieces just like this and when you go to pull them over you don't have to worry about because the edge of the brush was super thick you got a bunch of Mod Podge up here and it done stuck to the other side of your project instead you have a nice clean line just like this and you can carry on decoupaging your project no matter what it is, all the way around. And I'm not going for perfect here with the decoupage and the creases and all the things just because, you know, this is a little tutorial and it's mostly about sharing painting or not painting 
but I wanted to show you guys, you know, some little tips with that. And in addition to kind of let you know that if you see some wrinkles, the video isn't about how to do wrinkle free decoupage. Okay, give your girl a break. Not too shabby, people. Not too shabby. It turned out good. But look at that. <laughs> if you're ever faced with this problem, like there's a little gap, just take a piece, you know, pop it on there. And, you know, nobody's going to know the wiser. For this video, I'm not going to waste another napkin to do it because I have just enough napkin to do this one and the one that's painted. I don't want to have to use another napkin. Now we are going to seal over this, but first I need to allow this to completely dry. I get asked this all the time and people complain about wrinkles and all the things. Now, as you can see, there is minimal wrinkles. Okay. Like I said, I wasn't going for perfection here. I was going for just getting it on. And this is my minimal going for just getting it on. We're going to allow this to dry and then we're going to put a seal over it. The reason why you do not want to just immediately pop some Mod Podge on here is because you can see this is wet. This is a little wet. There's some bubbling there. And if I take this, it's going to smooth it out a bit, you know. But imagine if I'm not doing this and then I just decide to take my sealer, whatever I'm using as a sealer, again, this video, we're using Mod Podge, it's going to do nothing but make this nice and extra saturated. So you are running a really good chance of completely ripping your napkin all to hell. So just save yourself the time of doing that and just be patient. Look at me. Look at me. You can do it. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And just, you know, set it and forget it. This was not easy for me to just pick one of these, but what I think I'm going to do for the sake of the video, and since they are super square, and like I said, I don't really have any extra spare. I'm completely sold out of my other prints right now. Um, I'm going to use our owl here in the center, this pretty, pretty little piece. And then we're going to just kind of do a little design around it, but it's still going to get the point across about you being able to see through it. I personally don't like cutting my pieces very often because I don't feel like they blend in very well. I think it kind of makes them stand out when they got sharp edges. So for this to make it blend in, I'm going to do like a little highlight around our piece on the glass. And then, um, yeah, we'll still be able to see it. And we'll do the same thing. This way, it's two different designs, really, and giving you the same idea. But as you can see, super thin, just like a napkin. It is not like paper. Now, if y'all want to know how to decoupage paper, like for real paper, like actual like cardstock, things like that, that's a whole nother video. That is a whole nother situation and circumstance trying to attach that onto glass because that stuff is thick. And I even use different tools to go about that. I know I don't have gloves on. Listen, I'm not touching the outside of it, okay? My hands are getting sweaty. <laughs> Give me a break. So I'm just going to kind of start here. Let's check our painted pieces. There is a slight difference. You can tell that this one was painted. Okay. It's a little smoother versus this one was sponged twice. So this is a sponge one time and then a paint layer. And this is two sponge layers. And both of these, in my opinion, are completely painted and ready to decoupage. However, if the little bumpity bumps bother you, grab some sandpaper and then, I mean, it's chalk paint, people. Don't be scared of it. Just sand it down. You know, you ain't gotta like get wild wild with it, but you know, you can see the bumpity bumps. And this is a sand and sponge, so it really curves on there. Obviously, if you're using a piece of sandpaper, it's going to be a little bit different. And you can see they've really smoothed down right here where I was sanding. And I'll show you how you can really tell. See how they're not sanded down right there? Sanded down. Okay. And you can sand this down even smoother. But just wanted to share with you, it really doesn't matter if they do have bumps when you're using chalk paint. You can sand this down 
as buttery smooth as you want. But if you want to avoid this whole situation altogether, altogether, feel free to use a paintbrush and do three layers of your chalk or multi-surface paint. Then continue to your decoupage medium and your decoupage project. So the question is, should you paint your pieces or not? Here are the painted pieces. The design pops really well when you have a painted background. You can see all the vibrance in the colors. I did seal both of these pieces, well, all of these pieces, with the same exact Mod Podge that you see me use underneath of the napkin. Here are the two pieces that absolutely have no paint behind them whatsoever. It's just glass. The design's still extremely pretty, but it is a little translucent. It's really an entirely different look. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of both of these. Blue really pops right here in this corner and while you can still see the blue, you can also see my finger behind that. See that? You can't see my finger at all behind this. So for those of you that want to put a candle in your pieces and have a little bit of light shining through, these pieces would probably fit your needs a little bit more. It's kind of hard to see. I tried to stand in the shadow. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see, but you can definitely see through this from my perspective. Where if you put that same little candle in the piece that's painted, you're not going to be able to see anything at all through that napkin. And I feel like with this one, you can really tell a difference. Pop in our candle over here. See if you can see. Let me try and block the... <laughs> there we go. Is that a little bit? Yeah, you can see it. See how you can see the candle flickering up in there? You are not going to see the candle at all flickering in this one. So should you paint your glass pieces before you decoupage them, people? That really depends on you. Make a decision. Pick which one you like and then go for it. People, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And please keep in mind, all the information provided in this video is based solely on my opinion and experience with decoupage. Different strokes for different folks. Take it or leave it. I hope some of it helps. And until next time, bye.